There's lactic acidosis in the medical world, and that's a dangerous thing to have because you're dying. This is not the same thing at all. This is a nutritional deficiency, and it's localized, and it's basically a deficiency of B vitamins, and there's how many B vitamins are there? There's 24. When you go to the health food store and you get a multi-B complex, there's going to be six B vitamins in there, and that's it, sometimes eight. Okay. Now, Dr. Roy Lee says there's 24 B vitamins that they know of in the 1930s. And then he said there's probably 10 more. And then those 32 or 34 B vitamins complex with each other, and they form more B vitamins. So Dr. Roy Lee says there's 50 to 100 B vitamins. He said there's not one food that has all the B vitamins in them. So you can't just eat liver and think you're getting all the B vitamins. You got to get account, you know, various foods put together. So um, the supplements I, were, I was on had nutritional yeast and liver and other foods that have all the B vitamin complexes. So as I studied these old books and old notes and old articles, what I really realized is that before World War II, all medical research was feeding studies. So like they would give a diet to guinea pigs and cats and various other animals and they subtracted vitamins out of those diets and they watched their health decline and they took notes. Like these guinea pigs lost their hair and these cats gave birth to deformed babies. And then after World War II, it changed over to studying poisons. How does this poison affect your body? So all the good research is, was done before World War II. And I, I'm going to show you some of these books I've been studying. Um, this is called the A vitamin noces. This is from 1944. So A means minus or without vitamin. Oces means a condition of. So conditions of no vitamins in the diet. And this started, the, the first edition was in the 30s. So it's, and this is what Dr. Roy Lee studied amongst other books. And I'm acquiring these other books. And you can find them. Um, thank God for the internet. This is a book from 1911. It's called The Fasting Cure. This is by Upton Sinclair. You may have known him from The Jungle. It's a book called The Jungle. This is a fantastic book. 1910, 1911, they were reversing cancer with fasting. And they got squashed, and he documents how the government squashed it. This is another book. So Dr. Roy Lee did two articles a month for 25 years. Here are some of those articles. Now I'm going to read the back of this. And it says, um, in 1961, after Dr. Lee and the vitamin product company, his company, lost their case in the Supreme Court ruling, this book, for all practical purposes, ceased to exist. So um, the feds came to his library with two dump trucks, and they filled them up with his research and most of his library books, and they took it to the Milwaukee City dump and they burned his research. So the most valuable research of feeding, you know, the feeding studies and, and supplements and food, it's burned. You can thank the government for that. Um, here's another compilation of his work right here. Now there is one paragraph in one article from 1960 that I'm going to talk about and it explains everything. And as you go through other articles, if you don't know this one first piece of um, information, nothing else really makes sense. You got to know this one paragraph. And when I read it, when I read this paragraph, I was like, oh, and I had to read it again. And then I read it a third time. And then I walked away, and then I came back, and I read it a fourth time. I could not believe it because it explains everything. This is a book called Practical Endocrinology, 1931. This is from the founder of the father of endocrinology. And it's 650 pages long. There is some super valuable information in here. And like I said, I study a lot. Now I understand <laughs> endocrinology better than ever before. And you know, back in the 30s, if a doctor gave a patient hormones, like thyroid hormone or estrogen, that was shameful. Because that is quackery and it's simpletons. That is too simple. 
you got to do organotherapy, which means you eat the organs plus other factors. They all knew back in the 30s and 40s that when you eat, like if I have a weak thyroid and I just eat thyroid, it's not enough. You got to have plants and herbs and minerals and other vitamins all combined together as a complex of nutrients and then you can fix the thyroid. All right, so go to the, um, go to the next one. So, so B vitamin deficiency causing lactic acidosis is how your body declines in its health. I started this company last year and this is one of the reasons why I felt so bad because I got totally stressed out. And it's a good fat bar. Here's our website, goodfat.bar. This is my commercial. So go to goodfat.bar and order some good fat bars. It is the first and only bar on the market that is meant to have more fat than protein or sugar. And uh, when, I, when I submitted to the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office to get the trademark on this, I had to actually create a whole new category of food bar. They accepted that. Then I had to submit for the trademark. Okay, go to the next one. That's what it looks like. This is, uh, we got cinnamon and we got lemon ginger turmeric. But the, like the lemon ginger turmeric is seven grams of fat, five grams of carbs, three grams of protein. Okay, go to the next one. The best one for your buck is a cocoa almond. There's no millet on top. There's no grains in it whatsoever. 10 grams of fat, 8.4 grams of protein, and seven grams of carbs. So the point of this, it's cacao butter. You know, and in Central America, cacao is the food of the gods. Chocolate is a refined cacao. Chocolate is not food of the gods. Only cacao butter. <coughs> cacao is spelled C-A-C-A-O. All right. If you see C-O-C-O, -C -O, that's a refined cacao. And if you ever see C-O-C-O-A, that word is a combination of the first two words mistakenly put together by a typesetter who was creating a dictionary in the mid-1800s. So C-O-C-O-A is a mistake that's never been corrected. So when I see an ingredient list with C-O-C-O-A, like Hershey's or Nestle, I know that they don't know what they're talking about. And they've never studied the history of their own product. Okay, go to the next one, Nikki. This is a, a company I started with um, one of my associates. It's a, an, it's a consulting slash educational business for nutrition-based um, offices. Okay, next one. All right. So now the main symptom I had was a tightening feeling. So the tightening was here and it was here over the heart and it was across the chest and it was around the back. And I also had this, this is called the platysmus muscle. That would tighten up. And then my, my lung muscles would tighten up. So I had shortness of breath and I had a deep ache in my calf muscles. So a, a massage therapist would have said, oh, you need more massage. Or a physical therapist would, you know, people have different opinions on what this is. And, um, but the word anxiety actually means in ancient Greek, tightening, narrowing, or distress. So here's my distress. During that one bad night in January, I'm going through my phone and I'm trying to do research on websites and stuff. And then I think to myself, I hope it doesn't snow because we live in Michigan. I hope it doesn't snow because I can't use the snow blower. And then I thought, Who's going to mow my lawn in the summer? Because I can't mow my lawn. My house is too big. My yard is too big. I need to sell my house. I'll get a small condo. And then I was like, wait a minute. These aren't my thoughts. Because I love using snowblower. I love using the lawnmower. I love my house. I got two and a half acres. It's a beautiful house. And I thought, where did these thoughts come from? That's anxiety. And I'll describe the mechanism and you'll know why I got those thoughts. So there are several causes for this whole scenario. Now mine was I got stressed out and I lost all my B vitamins because my nervous system soaked up the B vitamins from the rest of my body, including my liver, and I was B vitamin deficient. So when I started the supplements in late January and I felt, two days late, I felt better two days later is because I was on lots of supplements with all the B complexes put together. But there's other ways to lose your B vitamins. Eating white bread and eating white sugar, white processed food, because those grains originally were brown coming out of the field. Then they got polished to have a longer shelf life. They took out all the B vitamins. And then when you eat grains or carbohydrates, it requires your body to use up B vitamins. 
So you're getting deficient in B vitamins in two ways. Your food doesn't have it, and your body uses up your B vitamins to uh, digest your B vitamin deficient food. Okay, go to the next one. So this is a graph of per capita wheat flour use from 1830 all the way at the end there to 2006. And you can see, now in 1830, bread or grains were organic. All of it was organic. All of it was whole grain. None of it had a shelf life of four weeks. They all had a shelf life of like three days if it was really fresh. So true bread only lasts three days on the shelf. So grain got more popular and it started to decline in the late 1800s. Here's 1910. Now this is what happened. Food manufacturers started to market white bread is for rich people, brown bread is for poor people. So you don't want people thinking that you're poor. So buy the white bread. So then there was, they made so much white bread, they had the surplus of it, and then um, everybody, even poor people were eating white bread, it became really cheap. So you can see the decline, and um, it would stick to the roof of their mouth. It was hard to, to swallow, it's hard to chew. And then here, it started to go back, this is 1974. And I guess the refining process got better, and the, the manufacturing of the bread got better, so it was easier to, to, to swallow, to chew. Now, here's the cycle by which our bodies decline in their health. And this happens to everybody which, when, they have a, when you have a chronic disease. Okay, so this is what I experienced, and I'm going to walk you through it, and then I'll explain you, to you like, more details about the ramifications of it. So, now typically, people burn sugar too much as opposed to burning fat. There's only two fuels that your body uses, sugar and fat. Now there is protein, but protein burns like sugar. So a high protein diet is like eating a lot of candy. All right? So there's either, you're either burning sugar or you're burning fat. So every American walking around is burning sugar 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all their life until they, have, until they die. And they get, suddenly get cancer at the age of 65. And nobody knows why. It must be genetic. It's because you're burning sugar. Now sugar, the, um, the use of sugar creates waste products. And these are the waste products. Lactate, acetate, ethanol, and acetaldehyde. So I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. Acetaldehyde is something used to make plastic. And it causes the hangover feeling. Ethanol is alcohol, and that causes drunk feeling. Could be happy drunk, could be drowsy drunk, could be angry drunk. So if you have a pasta meal and you fall asleep after that, it's because you're drunk. And you wake up with a headache because you have a hangover. Number three here is acetate. That's nail polish. And then, the, and then this one is lactate. Now lactate can get converted back into um, sugar. And the liver does that. So I'm going to draw a line here. So the liver converts lactate back into sugar, and, this, and then you get the cycle. Now these three things here also go to the liver, and they get cleaned up. So this is called the lactic acid cycle. Now it's not replenishing lactic acid, it's actually lactate. But in the research and in the studies, they use the term lactic acid. So some people think that we're dealing with lactic acid, we're not. We're dealing with lactate. So lactate goes to the liver, and it's the B vitamins that the liver uses to clean up the toxins and convert lactate back into sugar. Okay, Nikki, next one. So there's other names for this cycle. Another name for it is called the Cori cycle. And it was because it was discovered by um, Dr. Doctors Cori, a husband and wife team. I think it was 19, 1947. They discovered this, so therefore it's called, it's named after their names. And then there's another name for it, it's called cachexia cycle. So raise your hand if you know what cachexia is. Okay, so cachexia is how cancer patients die. Muscle cells wasting away, rotting from the inside out, um, bad breath. Uh, no matter how many calories you feed them, they can't gain weight, they keep losing weight. So cachexia is death. Now, in ancient Greece, the word cachexia actually meant bad state of health, or also known as bad habits. So what are the bad habits that cause cachexia and cancer 
and death and chronic disease. That's it right there. So it's sugar. So, so I'm telling you, this is it for health. This is, this is the big picture for all of health care and chronic disease. Okay, Nikki, what's the next one here? Okay, so we got too much lactate acetate, the waste products that I mentioned here, and ethanol causing a relative deficiency in oxygen. So watch my fingers. Here's L for lactate and the other three waste products. In the blood, here's O for oxygen. You have an increase of the waste products relative to oxygen. So the oxygen goes down, the waste products go up, and that makes the arteries dilate. Okay, which is fine when you're exercising. Because when you're exercising, your muscle cells burn sugar quickly, and you get a buildup of garbage, and then your body says you get sore muscles, your muscles get weak, because they're losing oxygen, they're getting a lot of waste, the arteries dilate to get the circulation going through to the liver faster, you start breathing heavier to get the oxygen up, and that's normal when you're exercising. But I was just sitting in my chair one year ago, this happened, and my heart, so the arteries dilate, the circulation slows down, and my heart goes like this to try to speed the circulation up. So that's what I experienced. It took me several months to figure that out. <laughs> but Royal Lee, so Royal Lee knew that back in 1934 when he released the supplements that I took that made me feel better. So he figured out my condition 85 years ago or so. Okay, so lactic acidosis and hypoxia, or anoxia, meaning no oxygen, occur at the same time in the blood. So the blood pH becomes too acidic. 7.35 to 7.45 is the normal range. Now, in the hospital, if you're dying of cachexia, cancer, heart disease, you're going into a diabetic coma, all of that means your blood pH could be 7.34, and it's really, really dangerous. But we're not talking about end-stage medical care. We're talking about how to clean up your blood so that instead of your blood being, you know, if it should be, let's say, you know, 7.4, if it's 7.39, um, maybe you need to correct that a little bit. And I'm going to go through all these symptoms to know if you need this kind of, a help, this kind of help. Okay, now in my career, I've had a lot of people tell me that if the body's too acidic, then you get poor health. But that doesn't make sense to me because the urine pH is different than the saliva, which is different than the stomach, which is different than the intestines. We have all these different areas of different pH. So it's not the um, um, body, it's specifically the blood. And it may not even be the arterial blood, it could just be the, venous, the, ve you know, the veins blood, the venous blood. Okay. But that I'm not so, so sure about, and I'm still reading and learning more. And back in the 1950s, they actually had a device that measured the blood pH without, punct without puncturing the skin. And I'm trying to find it, and there's nothing available now. There's been a lot of squashing of information. I actually have a machine called um, Lactate Plus, and it measures lactate in the blood. And when I called up to order it, I was asking the guy, who, who orders this? What do they use it for? He goes, oh, veter veterinarians use it a lot because if they find high lactate in the dog's blood, they know there's a chronic disease and they start looking for it. And I was like, oh, that makes sense because I've discovered this whole thing, lactic acidosis, and I started explain it, explaining it to him. He goes, oh, well, I can't sell it to you because it's illegal to use it to make a diagnosis. And I said, oh, I would never do that. <laughs> so I bought it and... Uh, but it's not quite good enough because I have people with cancer and their lactate level is normal. So I, I don't really know of like a really good blood test that just says, bam, you have it. Let's do this procedure. Let's take these supplements. Let's change your diet. But you know what? We don't even need that because the symptoms, they're so obvious. Okay. Testing in urine saliva for their pH is not good enough. It's not adequate. Nikki, next one. Okay. And I explained to you this is not a medical lactic acidosis. There is a study a patient sent to me where in the ER, there's people who are dying, or not in the ER, but in the hospital, and they give them baking soda, and they live on average three to five days longer. Why would baking soda make somebody in lactic acidosis live longer? Because it does this, right. 
Yeah. Okay, next. All right, so here's an e example of uh, capillaries. Okay, now I mentioned that the arteries dilate, the circulation slows down. And imagine the little capillary beds. 75% of your arteries are capillaries. They're so small that red blood cells have to fold in half in order to pass through a capillary. This is 75% of your circulation. And this is where the food goes to the cells and the waste leaves the cells and goes to the arteries to get cleaned out. Now imagine that this is um, congested, capillary engorgement with hypoxic and um, toxic blood, stagnant. Got that? This is key, capillary engorgement with toxic, hypoxic blood. It's stagnant. What happens to the cells? They die. And if this is a muscle, what happens to muscle cells when they die? They tighten up. In other words, rigor mortis. A dead body tightens up within, could be an hour, could be three hours. They tighten up. So I was having a little bit of rigor mortis here, and then sometimes it was here, and sometimes it was here, and sometimes it was in my calf muscles. Okay. Now, reading Dr. Royal Lee, he says, muscle physiology is extremely important. You got to have the chemistry of the muscles working very well. Why is that? Because you have so much muscle mass. And plus it's heart. That's muscle. So he's like, if you, if you make sure that the muscles are working good and the blood is clean and the muscles are being fed, you are in good shape and it fixes a lot of endocrine pathologies. It fixes a lot of brain problems. It fixes a lot of problems. So the muscles, the arteries have to be clean. You got to have good circulation. The muscles have to be healthy and a lot of things will be healthy. Next. All right. This is a poster <clears throat> that I picked up six years ago and I, and I knew about it in the 90s. See at the top it says metabolic pathways. Here's the poster. And I thought to myself, if I could figure this poster out, I would know a lot. <laughs> so here's this, I've had it for a long time. And then about six weeks ago, I laid it out on the floor with a flashlight and I just started reading words. And I had no idea what was going on. It took me an hour and then I figured it out. Okay, Nikki, next. So we're zooming in. Actually, go back. This is, see the pink here? And then we got this yellow here. Okay, next. So we're zooming in pink here, yellow here. This is sugar burning. So we have glucose, fructose, and sucrose at the top of this pink. That's inside the cytoplasm of the cell. Sugar is turned into what's called pyruvate. And pyruvate is here. Next, Nikki. So sugar burning. There it says glucose there. There's the pyruvate, and there's acetate, ethanol, acetaldehyde, and lactate. Okay, so burning sugar causes waste. Okay, next, Nikki. All right, so I zoomed in more. Pyruvate, acetate, ethanol, acetaldehyde, lactate. Now, lactate can be converted back into a fuel, into pyruvate, but 25% of lactate stays in the blood. And what does lactate and acetate do? They dilate the arteries. What does acetaldehyde do? It causes you to feel like a hangover. It's poisonous. They, make it, they use it to make plastic, ethanol, alcohol. Okay, next. Now this side here, that's burning fat. The yellow is in the mitochondria. Mitochondria are the energy producing factories in the cells. When you take a cell and you look at the whole cell, half of the cell is mitochondria. So you want to be doing, you want to be burning fat and the most, um, the, the easiest fat to use is called ketones. And this box right here, it says ketone bodies. So these ketones go from here to here to boom, acetyl-CoA. This is the money right here. So the pyruvate from sugar burning pops into the mitochondria through these membranes and it becomes acetyl-CoA. This is what we want, acetyl-CoA. You can either get it cleanly and efficiently from burning fat, or you can get it dirtily <laughs> with waste and garbage from burning sugar. So when you eat um, pure fat and your body's burning fat, that's called ketosis. And that prevents this. This disappears. 
when you're in ketosis. Now, burning sugar used to be very rare 300 years ago or 2,000 years ago. It was so rare. It only happened when somebody came upon an apple tree in the summer or ran away from a bear. You're burning sugar for 15 minutes running away from a bear. Otherwise, for the rest of the week, you're burning fat. And some cultures, you know, some people didn't have food for a while. And we're not, we don't have food, you burn fat. Okay, but now in this country, all we're doing is this all the time. Now, since this is so rare, historically, it actually takes very unique, very unique DNA to burn the sugar. And it just so happens to be the same DNA that causes heart disease, cancer, and diabetes. So if you want to turn off those horrible genes, get off the sugar. When I say get off the sugar, I mean deplete it from your blood. Get your blood sugar down as low as you can. At the same time, you've got to get your fat up. This is the opposite of what every dietitian and every medical doctor has ever said in our modern culture. They say keep your blood sugar up, eat three meals a day plus three snacks, and keep burning sugar, fat is bad. But about three, four weeks ago, it was um, released in JAMA, the Journal of American Medical Association, that the sugar industry, beginning in the 1960s, spent a, they've been spending a lot of money convincing us that cholesterol is bad and that fat is bad. So that's just total deception. The 1960s was a bad decade. Royal Lee's library was burned in the 60s. The sugar industry started their PR campaign in the 60s. Big Pharma started ta attacking um, iodine in 1962. So we need to reverse all that from the 60s. Okay. All right, next, Nikki. Okay. So we're going to call this localized um, nutritional deficiency lactic acidosis. So like I mentioned before, I had some quivering here before and I had nausea here. So I had it in different spots at different times. Next, Nikki. Okay, so we're going to go through a bunch of symptoms, and I'm going to try to go fast. And we're going to go through different locations. I'm going to start with nerves and muscles. Okay, so I'm going to just read through this. So fatigue could be diagnosed as chronic fatigue syndrome. This is lactic acidosis. Muscle aches, soreness could be diagnosed as fibromyalgia. Numbness or tingling in the hands, arms could be diagnosed as neuropathy. It's lactic acidosis because I had numbness and tingling in my hands and arms. Ankles swell up, could be called pitting edema. And then they start going down this path of heart problems. All right, can't put or have arms over the head. Um, that's like a, like a later stage of like heart problems, etc. Lactic acid makes nerve endings hyperkinetic. So ADD and ADHD. So kids that are like, you can't touch them, they can't take much sensory in input. It's because their nerves are fried because their blood is filled with toxic waste and hypoxic. Next. All right, here's a woman with a sore neck. Yeah, she's typing on a computer, but there's people who type on a computer for 10 years and never have any pain. There's other people that type for six months and they get chronic pain. So women get pain up in here, you know, diagnosed as fibromyalgia, whereas men get it in the heart. So women have estrogen that protects their heart from lactic acidosis. So that's why men get more heart disease and then women get more fibromyalgia it's the same mechanism. Next. Deep ache in the calf muscles could be diagnosed as neuropathy, weakness, <clears throat> cramping, or neuritis. I've seen this in 50 to 60 percent of my patients with a chronic condition, and it's, that's obvious. That's lactic acidosis. So even grand mal seizures and multiple sclerosis, same thing. Um, <clears throat> now this is super interesting. In an acidic environment, <clears throat> Many enzymes reverse their constructive actions to destructive actions and tear down tissue, releasing uric acid and guanidine, two main chemicals of arthritis. <coughs> Chronic arthritis is lactic acidosis, and this is the mechanism. So you may have heard of the microbiome, you know, the friendly bacteria in your gut. Well, if you eat, start eating bad food, those friendly bacteria turn into destructive bacteria. Right? They, then they bore holes through your intestines, you get leaky gut. Same thing with enzymes. You have friendly enzymes until your blood is dirty, and then you get 
then you get unfriendly enzymes and they start to eat at your joints and you get arthritis. Um, fatigue, again, I mentioned, but due to inhibition of enzymes. So with dirty blood, the enzymes don't work as well and then you don't get the uh, correct physiology metabolic pathways happening in the body. Lowered physical endurance. Educated athletes are trying to clear lactate faster through the liver by exercising differently than in the past. But what they need is better liver supplements. Okay, it's not better exercise or different exercise. You need liver supplements. So I've been on liver supplements since the end of January. And on Sunday, I worked out with weights for three hours. And I'm telling you, I'm better now than when I was in my 20s or even in high school because my liver's in good shape. So endurance athletes are going into ketosis and they are breaking records left and right. There's a husband and wife team that rode a boat from California to Hawaii. They were in ketosis the whole time. They broke the record, a record set by a team of four men. And there's ultra marathon runners breaking the track record by, you know, all, you know, 20 minutes or even more. Okay, next. All right. So acidosis. This comes from Henry Harrow, the guy, the father of endocrinology. And this is his book, 1931. Acidosis is a customary finding in practically all endocrine difficulties. It is identical with what the French have called demineralization or loss of minerals or the, or the robbing of the system of the alkali reserves, which is minerals, that is kept available in the tissue juices for the neutralization, for the neutralization of acid waste as they are formed. So minerals are really important to uh, um, get rid of lactic acidosis. And I know that I was deficient in uh, minerals and I started taking potassium, I felt a little better. Now, th this is an interesting story. So through the summer, my resting pulse rate was 72, which is high for me. And then uh, one of my associates put me on a supplement. It's a homeopathic remedy of, of uh, minerals. There's no minerals in there. It's the energy of minerals. So when you take the energy of it, it was a liquid, it, the energy tells the minerals where to go and what to do. It kind of wakes things up like, hey, wake up. You have calcium and you're not using it. You have magnesium, you're not using it. So I took two squirts, it was in this office, I went home and I'm sitting on my couch and I was like so relaxed. I was like, okay, something's different now. What's different? It must be my pulse. So I took my pulse and it was 54. Immediately from 72 to 54. Okay, next. So here's the stomach and abdomen. Nausea, loss of appetite, could be diagnosed as H. pylori, gastritis, acid reflux, lactic acidosis. Fullness at the bottom of the front of the neck and coldness could be diagnosed as underactive thyroid. Now, Dr. Harrower says, yeah, underactive thyroid is lactic acidosis. And adrenal fatigue is lactic acidosis. Because in the 30s, 40s, 50s, they knew that those organs clean the blood. And if you're not having enough of the hormones from those organs, your blood is dirty, you get lactic acidosis. Loss of hydrochloric acid in the stomach. Now, that bad night that I had in January, I had for dinner, four burger patties. That was my worst night. A few days later, like five days later, I had beef stew, a little bit of beef stew for dinner, and I had the same symptoms. It wasn't as bad. So I, do, I didn't have any B vitamins for my stomach to make hydrochloric acid. So my stomach was struggling with digesting the, that red meat, <coughs> right? So now red meat's not bad. Everybody says it is, but the truth is you're deficient in B vitamins. You need to fix your body, then you can eat red meat again. Okay, next. All right, heart, chest, lungs. These are, these are diagnoses or symptoms that are lactic acidosis. There's 86. I quit counting at 86 diseases and symptoms, so let's keep going. Asthma, exercise-induced asthma, narrowing, the tightening feeling, anxiety, choking feeling, esophageal spasm, angina, heart palpitations, dyspnea. Body temperature lowers. Blood pressure can go up or down. Pulse goes up. It's not a blocked artery, so we don't know what it is. That's what cardiologists say. 70% of cardiology um, is, is stumped because it's lactic acidosis. Now, my cousin has AFib. He's a little bit older than me, and I put him on um, a supplement, and um, he was carrying around a blood pressure pill in his pocket, and he would take it when he got AFib, and his AFib would last for 48 hours. And he was trying to like do a weird breathing thing or trying to swallow it to go away. 
this doctor was, you know, doesn't know this information. So I talked to my cousin like four weeks ago and he hadn't had any AFib for, for uh, three months. And he hadn't had his blood pressure pill in like four months. So we fixed it. I fixed it in like, it only took like five or six months to fix his AFib. That's because I know what it is. It's lactic acidosis. Okay, beriberi. That's a form of heart disease and it's been known to be a vitamin B1 deficiency. But that's the medical thought process is, what is the one vitamin that's deficient? Well, B1, and once they found that, they're like, yep, we are done and we are awesome. But the truth is, they're missing all the other B vitamins. Okay, tightening of the chest muscles, heart esophagus could be diagnosed as, okay, Wolf Parkinson's white, premature ventricular contractions, arrhythmia, bundle branch block, fried nerves endings. These are all lactic acidosis next. So here's a guy, it's pain here for him, but for the woman, it's fibromyalgia. Same mechanism, yeah. There's the woman, next one. Okay, brain. All right, so imagine this, capillary engorgement and cell death in the brain. Oh my God, now your brain cells are dying. What do you think is gonna happen? Bad thoughts. These are not your thoughts. This is your brain controlling you. So now you go crashing into fear, depression, grief, wanting to leave, bipolar. So when you feel good, man, you feel great. And the psychiatrist says, oh, you feel too great. But it's like, but I'm not dying. I feel great right now. Last night I felt like I was dying. Um, manic depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, anxiety, panic attacks, dizzy, people get dizzy, violent thoughts. I've seen all of this. And you know, people's brains just react differently. So I have a, a young girl, she's in her early 20s. She's a sweetheart. When this happens to her, violent sexual thoughts. That's what happens with her. And I have a guy, he uh, had a horrible childhood. His dad used to beat him. He ran away from home at the age of 13. Um, he got hooked on heroin. And then he cleaned up his act. And now he's in his uh, 30s. He's got a great wife. They bought a house. He's got a nine-year-old kid. The kid is awesome. He's got a great life. He's got a good job. But he has a constant stream of apocalyptic thinking. That's lactic acidosis. And it took about four months. And I walked into the treatment room. How you doing? And he's almost got tears coming out of his eyes because all those bad thoughts are gone. And now life is good. Well, life, when you look at it, life was good before because of his you know, job and wife and kid and house. But now those thoughts are, bad, are, are gone. So now life is good and it's totally awesome. And I asked him, when you were younger and you were on heroin, let me guess, the heroin reduced your pain, your tight feeling, the soreness in your calf muscles. But, and he said, yes. And they said, but the more you took, the worse it got. And he said, yes. So this is all of psychiatry, Lexapro, Prozac, Wellbutrin, you name it. They all lessen the pain of the anxiety tightness. It lessens this pain, but over time, it makes it worse, and you're going to see why. Um, avoiding the friction of social contact. Imagine a kid, 12 years old, drinking pop, avoiding friends, playing games, uh, video games all the time. Um, agoraphobia. You don't want to leave your house because driving a car becomes dangerous. Going to a mall becomes dangerous because you don't know what's going to happen inside. And um, fear of impending doom. I had a patient tell me that her fear is she's driving down the highway and there's dead bodies and car accidents all around her. These are, that's what her brain does. So, okay, next. So addiction is, I got this horrible pain and tightness, here's my drug. It could be sugar, it could be nicotine, it could be whatever medication, uh, street drug, and it eases the pain. That's what addiction is. Migraines caused by blood vessels dilating. I fix migraines because the arteries will like go like this. And you control, you fix the lactic acidosis, now the arteries are stable. Reviewing all of life's decisions, did I marry the right person, did I that kind of stuff. Time slows down. I've given this lecture before and people come up to me like, oh my God, your time does slow down. <laughs> Medicated with alcohol, psych drugs, talk therapy. But you know, and I talk to people about this. Hey, do you ever get this tight feeling? Oh yeah, that's just my personality. And they start crying because it's them. No, it's not them. It's the body. It's a body thing. You don't need to talk about it. You need to get on the right supplements to fix this. Okay. 
If you act out these thoughts, you might go to jail. Most of psychiatry and psychology is trying to figure this out. Okay, so violent thoughts, if you act it out, if you got a, a kid that doesn't know better and they act it out, it could be bad. Next. Okay, brain continued. There's three parts to this. Does it, people think, doesn't anyone care about me? I need to leave because right here is dangerous. The heart is tightening. There's squeezing. Bad thoughts. Right here is dangerous. I'm going to go somewhere else. Um, I want out. People, this is what people have told me. Fear of death, fear of loss of control. Sensitive to light, noise, touch, like Asperger kid or autistic children. Sudden shock deplete, depletes B vitamins like PTSD. So somebody who was in a battle zone or something. So my PTSD was actually six months of starting two new companies. The stress of it every day. But if a great grenade goes off, you know, 40 feet from, from somebody and they survive it, I mean, that's enough to, to shock the nervous system. Angry, short temper, shatter, scattered brain, 10 different things going on in their mind, no concentration, social anxiety, performance anxiety, next. All right, here's this guy. He had a meal. Now it's 3 o'clock in the afternoon and he's tired. This is lactic acidosis. He's tired because of maybe alcohol being formed from burning up the carbs, the sugar. This is symptom number one. If you get tired after a meal, you're it. <laughs> and you got to fix that because 40 years from now, it's a heart attack, it's a cancer diagnosis. Next. Um, more symptoms of acidosis. Increased nervous irritability, dehydration, um, trying to get air, allergies, high cortisol, subsequent adrenal fatigue, uh, noise and excitement cause unusual distress. Go back, Nikki, I'm sorry. Not being able to laugh at a funny story, not being able to snap out of it, not being able to hold on to oneself. They lose control. Um, reaction, reactions to stimuli are lacking or excessive. Okay, go, go ahead. Okay, next one. All right. Um, sight frequently become breathless easily. Um, okay, anabolism. So in this state, your body's building up pathological tissue. That could be... Um, Skin tags, moles, cysts, fibroids, cancer tumors, fat cells. Anabolic means in ancient Greek, literally digging with your hands into the mud and throwing the mud up into a pile, building a mound. So this builds mounds. Now catabolism is the opposite. So when I have patients go into true ketosis, these things go away, all these things that I mentioned. So I have a woman, she, three years ago, she's diagnosed with lung cancer, and then it metastasized to her brain. She started seeing me back in April. I treated it like lactic acidosis. Four and a half months later, all of her cancer is gone, confirmed at University of Michigan Oncology Department. Cancer is lactic acidosis. Now, I've had some successes, and I've had some failures, failures with it. But there's a book called Cancer as a Metabolic Disease. It describes this part of this system, removing the sugar out of the blood. Now, at six weeks into her program, the tumors were not growing anymore, and she had no new tumors, and the doctors were baffled. The oncologists were baffled. But at six weeks, she still was crying every day. She couldn't look at me in the face, and I would ask her a question, and she would turn her head and, talk, and have her friend answer. So I was always talking to the side of her head. But I, so then I did this and this. And then about six weeks after that, she was talking more, she was crying less. She actually looked at me in the eyes directly. She actually made a joke. So just doing this alone isn't enough. You gotta treat all three. It's gotta, you gotta do all three. Okay. Um, act, so some food allergies are lactic acidosis. Echothesia, that's inward trembling. So when somebody's trying to get off a psychiatric drug, the term is they, they kind of feel like uncomfortable in their body. It's echothesia, that's also lactic acidosis. Next one. Okay, here's osteoporosis. This is a normal bone. This is a bone with big holes in it. Here's the mechanism. The blood is acidic, and so the body pulls calcium carbonate, the minerals, from the bones, to buffer the blood. This doesn't happen because of genetics or because you're old. This is the mechanism of it. Got that? Okay, next. Let, restless leg syndrome, same thing. 
Okay, next. Here's an artery with acidic, poisonous blood going through the artery. The body lays cholesterol down on the inside of the artery to protect the arterial wall from poisonous blood. Lactic acidosis causes placking of the arteries. Okay, next. Here's uh, arthritis. It doesn't just happen because you're old or because you hurt yourself once. Here's the stages of arthritis, next one, and then destruction of the joint. It's because the enzymes in the poisonous blood turn to become destructive. Okay, next. Okay, this is a quote from Dr. Lee about an article called Guideposts to Mental Health, 1958. Two, two basic disorders of chemical balance are particularly important. An imbalance between the acid and alkaline minerals, acidosis and alkalosis, and an inconstant supply of oxygen and sugar to the nerve cells, anoxia and hypoglycemia. Thus, when the acid-alkaline pH balance of the body is, dis is disturbed, or there is a deficiency of sugar or oxygen, the result may be symptoms which are indicative of an instability of the nervous system. Now, back in 1958, they didn't know about ketosis. So they talked about sugar as the fuel. All right? Now, the information on ketosis and the therapeutic effects of fasting, remember that was squashed by the government around 1912, 1915. I mean, they killed it. And so now there's great research coming back on ketosis and fasting. Next. Okay, now, now we're going to talk about death. So death is hypoxia. This happens to an extreme. It's enough that the muscle cells tighten up and they stop, including the heart. And then sudden heart stoppage, athletes fall dead on the court or field because they're B4 deficient. You've got to do all the Bs, but B4 certainly is the most important to prevent the heart from suddenly stopping. They knew that in the 40s. Cell death leads to rigor mortis within 30 minutes. Okay, next. Okay, here's the solutions. Take awesome supplements with as many bees and liver in them as possible. Eat liver, rice bran, and nutritional yeast. Those are the three foods that have the most amount of B vitamins in them. Drink apple cider vinegar to decrease lactic acid. And then glutamine. You can get it as a pill form. And then eating raw meat juice. Raw meat juice is the best source of glutamine. Yeah, people are saying meat is bad and all this stuff. No, it's not. Okay, next. In conclusion, it might be said that remineralization is a handmaiden of organotherapy. So you can't just take the thyroid if you're going to fix a thyroid. You've got to take in the minerals. Many a failure from the use of active endocrine products is, in suitable cases is turned into success by associating with it the simple and ordinary therapeutic measure. So it's so simple to fix organs. And like I mentioned before, back then it was shameful to give somebody thyroid hormones because you're not fixing the thyroid. You should be fixing the thyroid and not give them hormones next. Um, temporary partial solutions. Addressing this alone is a temporary partial solution. So you can drink alkaline water. There's people that make their living off of selling alkaline water or alkaline water machines. And when you use it, it's a temporary partial solution. But you've got to do these other things here. Um, baking soda, Tums. I've had patients actually tell me they're on Tums to get, you know, to change the pH of their body. And then treating this, so that's this first part, that's this. And the second part down here is this. So you can treat hypoxia with food grade hydrogen peroxide or ozone therapy, and there's other things out there too. And I actually have a book called The One Minute Cure. It's about how to use food-grade hydrogen peroxide to cure everything. Well, it's not the one-minute cure. It's a partial temporary solution while you fix these other things. Okay, cool. Next. Okay, when medicine finds lactic acid with an arterial line when they draw blood from the artery, they use it only as an indicator that something else is going on. So they look for more. Diabetic ketoacidosis, alcohol poisoning, cyanide poisoning, kidney failure, Medicine never treats lactic acidosis, and they're debating, should we give people baking soda? And it's in the research, and they're trying to figure out, should we give people baking soda? Okay, that's what they do. Next. Okay, antagonists to B vitamins. I'm going to go through this real fast. These are the things that chemicals or foods that you take in your mouth that deplete the B vitamins out of your liver, and they, and they cause this. 
Tannins, that's the darkness of coffee and tea. Tannins. Alcohol. They knew this decades ago, alcohol. Sulfites, which are used in wine to preserve the wine. Sugar, we talked about that. White processed foods, we talked about that. And then we're going to go through drugs next. Pain relievers, like, and I bolded the most common ones. Aspirin. There's antibiotics. Aspirin causes death. Lactic acidosis is death. Antibiotics. Bactrim. Chemotherapy depletes most nutrients. Next. Um, estrogens. Osteoporosis estrogen drugs. Evista. Anti-Parkinson's drugs. Levodopa. NSAID. Celebrex. Advil. Back to the painkillers. Bayer Select. Motrin. Midol. Indocin. Naproxen. Aleve. Here's the steroids. Prednisone. Next. Phenobarbital. Dilantin. Um, Depakote. Cholesterol lowering drugs. More on estrogen, um, birth control pills, orthonorvum, next. Um, blood pressure drugs, Lasix, here's Demodex, anticonvulsant drugs, Tegretol, next. I'm just hitting the highlights. Allergy drugs, Nasonex, Asmacort, blood pressure, more blood pressure drugs, um, hydrochlorothiazide, next. Um, asthma drugs, Pomacort, Rhinocort, Flovent, next. And acids and stomach acid suppressors, tagamet, pepsid, Zantac, Prevacid, Prilosec, antibiotic dr anti-diabetic drugs, metformin, glucophage. Next. <laughs> so no wonder medicine kills over a thousand people a day. Because they're giving you drugs that cause you to die. And the mechanism is lactic acidosis. Okay. Addiction. So I looked up the word niacin. Niacin is vitamin B3. And it's originally called the pellagra. Pellagra is a skin condition. Pellagra preventing vitamin in enriched bread, 1942, coined from nicotinic acid. And it was suggested by the AMA as a more commercially viable name than nicotinic acid in 1942. Why is this? Because the new name, niacin, was found to be necessary because some anti-tobacco groups warned against enriched bread because it would foster the cigarette habit. So what these people saw was that the more cigarettes people smoked, the more, I'm sorry, the more white bread people ate, the more they wanted to smoke. And what, why would they smoke more? Because they get the tightening feeling. They get lactic acidosis. Okay, next. Okay, now there's good and bad lactic acid. And, it's this, and um, it has to do with um, physics. And in chemistry, they talk about a thing called chirality, which is spin, left-handed versus right-handed. You can have one molecule that looks exactly the same, but the field spins left or it spins right. So we actually have a supplement next. Um, here's lactic acid. And next, um, this is a field. This is the same field that's around everything, electrons, dogs, you, the earth, a tree, a supercluster of galaxies, this is the field. It rotates, it's a hollow in the center like a donut. It rotates in and it spins around. Okay, is it spinning left or is it spinning right? Foods spin left, poison spin right. That's the general rule. So if you have lactic acid spinning right, that's a poison. If you have lactic acid spinning left, it's a food. Next. There's the field. Next. So this is lactic acid yeast. All right, next, this is a food. It's not a poison. And I just want to point out, so here's a, another version of that poster that I was showing you. And I want to show you these, these arrows in this um, illustration have the vitamins. So you can see the vitamins. They're listed here. It took me a long time to find this. When I went through all of my schooling and every medical doctor, every chiropractor, every dietitian, they don't learn what the arrows are. The arrows are vitamins and enzymes and minerals. So the arrow is like a misunderstood symbol. Nobody knows what it is. So when I actually took, got my first EKG, the medical, I told the medical doctor, I take a lot of vitamins. She goes, oh, that's a fad. And I kept my mouth shut. But she never studied the arrows. That's her problem. And that's the problem with every healthcare practitioner because if they studied the arrows, they would be giving you vitamins. Okay, next. 
All right, so I'm going to go over um, real quickly about fat adaptation. It is going from sugar burning to fat burning. And then when you eat another meal, you go back into sugar burning. Okay, so if you Google fat adaptation, you get to see uh, what other people say about it and you get to uh, uh, get your, you start to exercise your mitochondria to burn fat, not just sugar all the time. Turn your body into a fat burning machine. Um, now, Thomas Seyfried, he's the guy that wrote that book I mentioned, Cancer as a Metabolic Disease. And I was listening to a one-hour interview of him, and halfway through it, he goes, yeah, cancer, it's all lactic acidosis. And that book is backed by over a thousand research articles. Okay, next. Now, Otto Warburg is a guy from the 1920s. He figured, he figured out cancer tumors are um, fermenting lactic acid. They're using lactic acid as the fuel. All cancer tumors have this one thing in common. So it's the physiology and respiration of the cell. It's like my body has physiology and I'm respiring, I'm breathing in and out and it's functioning. Every cell does the same thing. So when a cell's physiology, respiration is aberrated, it becomes a cancer cell. It has nothing to do with DNA. Cancer is not a genetic disease, it's a metabolic disease. So Otto Warburg, um, it says elevated glucose uptake with lactic acid production in the presence of oxygen is a defining characteristic of most tumors. You can search that and, ex and get more understanding of that. All forms of cancer are characterized by two basic conditions, acidosis and hypoxia. Lack of oxygen, and acidosis are two sides of the same coin. Where you have one, you have the other. That's Otto Warburg in the 20s. All normal cells have an absolute requirement for oxygen, but cancer cells can live without oxygen, a rule without exception. And you can feed them a lot of oxygen. They can, use, they can still use oxygen. They start using so much oxygen, they create reactive oxygen species, otherwise known as free radicals. They create so much, they kill themselves. And um, Okay, next. This is a website called CancerTutor.com. This guy with this website, he studied over 600 cancer therapies. He knows what he's talking about. He said, lactic acid is the main component of the deadly cachexia cycle. That's this, i.e. lactic acid cycle. This is straight from his, his website. This is a quote directly from his website. Which, so cachexia cycle, which kills about half of all cancer patients. Lactic acid is a major cause of pain. It blocks nutrients from getting to the cells, which is why many cancer patients are weak. Dealing with the lactic acid and the microbes in the bloodstream should be a top priority from day one after the diagnosis of cancer. Orthodox medicine never does this. So this bold here, that's directly from the website. I didn't bold that on my own. Next. Okay, so I talked about cachexia meaning bad habits. Next. Adrenaline increases lactic acid production in isolated heart tissue up to five times normal production. So this is why you could be going along or like somebody has a compromised heart and under stress, it gets worse. Or somebody's already anxious and they have a stressful moment, it gets worse. Because the adrenals increase adrenaline, then you get more lactic acid, lactic acid production, you get this production up to five times more than normal. So when somebody is really sick, you want to turn the lights down low, have some nice music playing, you want to keep those adrenals calm. Okay, next. All right, I want to talk about Nathan Pritikin. He's a vegetarian cardiologist. He died in the 80s, um, 1985, at the age of 69. He had cancer. He had two forms of cancer. He went through chemotherapy. He had horrible pain. He committed suicide. He slit his wrist. They did an um, autopsy. His heart was very young. Autopsy showed healthy heart and arteries. He was a low-fat vegetarian, which is good for the heart. But it doesn't prevent cancer. Your diet needs to prevent both cancer and heart disease. And that's where you get into fat burning instead of sugar burning. So the its bottom line is a low-carb diet, moderate protein, high healthy fat. Intermittent fasting helps, and then a type of exercise called burst training, which depletes the sugar out of your blood. 
Okay, next. Okay, these are the supplements from a uh, standard process. And um, let Cataplex E2 raises oxygen. Cardio Plus raises oxygen. Cataplex G and Cataplex B lower the waste. Cyruda raises oxygen. Now, Dr. Royal Lee made his first supplement in 1929. It's the multivitamin, it's called Catalin. He made it for his mom. She was diagnosed with a heart condition. He quickly put it together, gave it to her. She lived 11 more years. She died at the age of 80. But what I read just a few weeks ago is that he came out with Cataplex B. This is the supplement for lactic acidosis. This was his first supplement he started working on in 1925. He was working on this for four years before he came out with Catalin to save his mom. He released it in 1934, which means he worked, he did feeding studies and research for nine years to fix your lactic acidosis. And he came out with Catalyx B in 19, and also Catalyx G came out in 1934 too. So B is uplifting and energizing, and Catalyx G is relaxing. Okay, and he said the body responds slowly. So I've been on Cataplex G since the end of January and I'll be on it for two more years. That's what slowly means. Okay, next. Conclusion. Lactic acidosis is, is the single most misunderstood, undiagnosed, mistreated, ignored, dangerous, yet most common and most important negative health condition that most people suffer from in this country. Solving this problem is the main effort of cardiology, psychiatry, psychology, functional medicine, allergy, oncology, neurology, and endocrinology. Emergency rooms, intensive care units, and critical care are filled with people who have an extreme degree of this condition.